There are certain forms of the conditional that have special importance and sometimes they're called derived forms and what we're going to talk about now are those derived forms of the conditional P implies Q and they have names. If you're given the conditional P implies Q or another way of saying it if P then Q P is oftentimes called the hypothesis if something that's the hypothesis but then whatever is called the conclusion so P is the hypothesis Q is the conclusion so if you see those terms the hypothesis is like the P the conclusion is like the Q in any case suppose we begin with a conditional statement and I'll just make something up just to illustrate suppose the statement for P implies Q is if you go then I stay I can form something called the converse of that statement by switching the P and the Q. So instead of it being P implies Q, it would be Q implies P. And since Q is I stay and P is you go, the converse of the statement if you go then I stay would be if I stay then you go. That's the converse of the original statement. There's also a form called the inverse and the inverse of the original statement negates P and Q. It doesn't switch them, it negates them. So if the original statement were P implies Q, then the inverse would be not P implies not Q. It just takes the original statement and negates it. In terms of the example I made up, if the original statement were if you go then I stay, the inverse would be if you do not go then I will not stay. And finally, there's a derived form called the contrapositive. The contrapositive does both things. It switches and negates. So in the original statement, it was P implies Q. In the contrapositive, the Q moves to the left and the P moves to the right, but they're also negated. So the statement, if you go, then I stay, would have a contrapositive that says, if I do not stay, then you will not go. Those are the four basic derived forms that we'll be dealing with. The statement, well, there are three other derived forms. The statement, the converse, the inverse, the contrapositive. Total of four there, counting the original statement. There's a fact here that will be helpful to know, and that is a statement and its contrapositive are always logically equivalent. And if you come across the right question, knowing that will get you the answer immediately. A statement and its contrapositive are logically equivalent. So for instance, P implies Q is logically equivalent to not Q implies not P. If you did a truth table for P implies Q, and if you did a truth table for not Q implies not P, you would find they'd be identical. A statement and its contrapositive are logically equivalent. Like I said, you can try it yourself and see that that's, that result is true. We won't do it here, but you can easily try it. In fact, if you have two statements of the form P implies Q, they're logically equivalent if and only if one statement is a contrapositive of the other. If you have two statements of the form P implies Q and they are not contrapositives of each other, then the statements are not equivalent and if they are contrapositive to each other they are equivalent. Well, let's look at this a little more closely. Here's a problem that says write the converse, inverse, and contrapositive of this statement and the statement is if y evenly divides 6 then y does not evenly divide 18. Remember if you have the statement P implies Q, the converse is Q implies P, the inverse is not P implies not Q, and the contrapositive is not Q implies not P. So if they want us to find the converse of that statement, looking at our little chart, we simply switch the P and the Q. So if, if we think of the P as being the Y evenly divides 6, and the Q as being Y does not evenly divide 18, all we need to do to get the converse is switch them. 
so it becomes Q implies P which would be if Y does not evenly divide 18 in other words the Q statement goes over here then Y evenly divides 6 the P statement goes over there and that's the converse to get the inverse we negate P and we negate Q so if P is Y evenly divides 6 then the inverse would be if Y does not evenly divide 6 in other words I took the negation of P then Y remember the original statement Q said not so the original statement would take the not out to negate it so if you negate something that already has a not in it it just simply removes the not so the inverse of the original statement would be if y does not evenly divide 6 then y evenly divides 18 and finally the contrapositive switches and negates so the p would go to the right and the q would go to the left and they would be negated at the same time so you would have not P, excuse me, not Q implies not P. And so that would be the Q goes first and it gets negated, so the not comes out and just becomes Y evenly divides 18. So you've got if Y evenly divides 18, and then you're going to negate the P, so the evenly divides becomes does not evenly divide. So the contrapositive of the original statement is if y evenly divides 18, then y does not evenly divide 6. So that's the converse, inverse, and contrapositive.